This is the starting line of the first 250 International Motocross at the Super Bowl of Motocross 1975. Motocross over here in America is going to be very competitive. There are a lot of very good young riders coming up like Marty Smith, Jimmy Ellis, Jimmy Pomeroy, Brad Lackey. And I really think uh, the Americans are going to be the next uh, world champions for sure. The riders are lined up in front of a mechanical starting gate. This gate is tripped by the man at the right hand here with a lever. There's a lot of good riders out there, the best in the world, and uh, it's, a tough, it's, a, it's a tough race. If I get a good start, I might do all right, but I'm just not going to, I just don't want to get hurt. I'm just going to take it easy. The best one out of here is the guy who gets the best hole shot. They're getting ready. They're all watching this man's hand who is right here on my right. It's going to go, and they're off. Four riders off to a beautiful start, Dave Despain. Down into the first turn goes Marty. Oh, Smith has crashed. A vicious end-over-end -end crash for the leader, Marty Smith, who just a moment ago, Ken, said he was going to take it easy. Hate to see if he'd really turned it on out there. He's up and seems okay. Appropriating first place and nearly down is Rex Staten. Staten from Montana, California, went all the way down to one knee. 50,000 people go crazy as Rocket Rex moves out into the lead. Second is the charging Czechoslovakian Zdenek Belki. Third, the four-time world champ, Roger DeCosta of Belgium. Meanwhile, Joe Parkhurst is standing by on the floor of the Coliseum with Marty Smith. Marty, can you tell me what happened? Well, I forgot about the change of first turn location. And uh, some bad bumps right there. Couldn't stop. You gonna be all right for the next moto? Yeah, I think so. Marty Smith may be all right, but his bike really looks twisted. Here is the leader, Rex Staten, by five bike lengths over Czechoslovakia's Belki. The international star studying the back of that brilliant young Californian Rex Staten, number 19. There's Belki chasing. Staten likes this course. Earlier today, we talked to him about the racetrack. It's my kind of track. Rough, real tight, really fast. From one turn to the next turn, really tight stuff where I can really control my bike really fast because they got really fast reflexes. Staten in the lead and in trouble. A savage end over end crash and the bike on top of him. A horrible crash by Rex Staten, the leader. That's the worst kind of accident there is, that end over end tumble and you saw it right there as Staten's bike really hit him a lift. You've got one of the most exciting riding styles in the business. Have you worked to develop that or does it just come naturally? Uh, this comes naturally, really. It's just... Everybody tells me I'm crazy, but, you know, I look at them and I think they're crazy. You just gas it if you're going to win, leave it on the longest. Rex Staten, who apparently left it on just a little too long, a little too hot, while leading the Super Bowl of motocross, and amazingly, he is still trying to recover his feet, get back up and keep going. Meanwhile, in the competition, Belke is in first place. A young Pennsylvania rider, De Stefano, is second. And what a battle we have for third here. In front, Hakey Mikkola, the defending world champion, closing in on him, the American national champ, Jim Weiner, moving into the final turn on the race course. Here goes Weiner to the inside, trying to make the pass on Mikkola. And he pulls a front, a bike length. Mikkola comes back on the outside, and it's a dead heat as they approach the finish line. Weiner uncorks a big jump and takes over third spot. The fans really react is Jim Weiner. It's sort of like a changing of the guard, Ken, an international motocross. Here's the American national champ, and he runs right by the world champion, Hakey Mikola, on bike number 44, and now starts stretching it out to about a 10-yard advantage. He's trying to reel in Tony DiStefano, the Morrisville, Pennsylvania teenager, who has just this year clinched a national championship. Full speed right here, about 70, 75 miles per hour, and then back into some hoop doos There's your leader, number 77, from Czechoslovakia, Belgium. Zdenek Belke, a little wheelie and up on the berm around that left-hand turn. He likes to race in America. He came here last year and found his first fame in the American Motorcycle Association's Inter-AMA Series. Now there's the second-place rider, De Stefano. Here we see Jim Weinert on number two, and he's definitely closing on De Stefano. Bike number three and bike number two, and that's the race for second place. Here comes number 44, the world champ, Amy Mikola. Oh, he's out of shape, and it's a classic whoop de doo crash. Nicola picking up the bike, apparently some problems with it. Earlier, Dave Despain examined this part of the course. Possibly the most contrary of motocross obstacles is the whoop de doo That's a series of roller coaster hills or bumps. It seems that it's always a compromise. No matter what combination of timing and weight shift you use, that next bump is always in exactly the wrong place. And 
with a violent pounding, and that next bump threatens to knock your front wheel from under you or send you over the handlebars. Here's the human interest story in the Super Bowl of Autocross. Number seven, 19-year-old Jimmy Ellis, Cobalt, Connecticut, had to start dead last, failed to qualify, did not run the mandatory laps against the clock, had mechanical problems. He's fought his way back now to fourth position from dead last. Here comes Stefano and Weiner battling for the finish line for second place as we move down in the final lap. Here comes Zdenek Belki, number 77, one turn away from victory in moto number one at the Super Bowl of motocross. He's lapping slower riders, has to go to the outside. Oh, he's in trouble. He stepped off the motorcycle. It almost got away from him, 50 yards from the finish line. Zdenek Belki goes on to win moto number one. And here comes the battle for second spot going down to the wire. Tony Stefano out in front of Jim Weiner. Weiner, the desperation move to the outside, but the Stefano holds him off as they finish moto number one. Remember now, they use the Olympic scoring system. One point for the winner, two points for second, and so on in each of the three segments. So score one point for Czechoslovakia's Velky, the Stefano gets two, Weiner three. Let's move along to the highlights of the second segment of motocross. Jim Ellis, remember now, he finished fourth in round number one, is leading over Tony DeStefano. DeStefano is right there again in moto number two. Cuts to the inside here as they move down toward the finish line. Ellis and Tony DeStefano battling for the lead in moto number two, and DeStefano had a wheel up on him for just a moment. Over the big jump they come. DeStefano sets it up wide. Oh, he's got it sideways and slides out. Tony DeStefano sliding to a halt on machine number three. Can't get it back upright. That's going to drop him way behind the leader, Jimmy Ellis. Belke goes back to second place. Weinert is in third. Here we come now. Down toward a finish with Ellis leading the way and Belke following him. Belke watching his every move, studying it as we come down toward a finish, trying to find a place on the racetrack where he can make a pass. Through the whoop de doo section they go with Jimmy Ellis of Connecticut leading Czechoslovakia's Zdenek Belke on that CZ motorcycle. Back around through the twisting, turning entrance to the peristyle jump. A last trip up that huge leap this time in the second moto. The margin seems to be shrinking a little bit as they disappear from view. Here they are, knights out of the darkness, becoming gleaming gladiators as they leap to the floor of the Los Angeles Coliseum. Ellis really turned it up. He turned it wide open, the crowd chanting, go, go, go. 50,000 people on their feet as this international confrontation comes down to a finish in moto number two. Oh, Belke gets wide. Ellis cuts to the inside, gets a better line through the turn. But this part of the racetrack right here is where Belke has been gaining ground the last couple of laps. Let's see if he's saving a move for Jimmy Ellis. We're coming down to a finish. They're off the final turn. Ellis grabs a big handful of throttle. Belky to the outside, but he can't hold on. Every fan is on his feet as Jimmy Ellis comes down to Insanity Ridge and leaps to victory in moto number two of the Super Bowl of motocross. So as we complete the second of these 20 laps, 26 motos for the Super Bowl here at the L.A. Coliseum, the overall combined scores with two rounds complete now. Velke with three points is leading. Ellis from Connecticut is second on the Can-Am bike with five points. And there's a tie for third, six points each for Weinert and DeStefano. This is the final of the 250 International Motos. The one minute sign is up. All the engines are running. There are no problems on the line. These are the leaders. Jimmy Weinert is third. Jim Ellis is second. And Belke is the leader. They're getting ready now. Watch very carefully because the riders, every one of them is going to make the same kind of start. They're all staying back at least five, six feet from the start, and there they go. A beautiful start, and there's a new development. Mike Runyard has gone out in front as he exploded out of the gate. He's a teammate of Jimmy Ellis, and that's a factor because Ellis is right there in third spot behind number 21, Pierre Carsmakers. Buried back in the pack is the race leader, Zdenek Belke, number 77. Tony DeStefano rides in fourth spot on number three. Here's DeStefano cutting down to the inside. Runyard is your leader, but DeStefano shoot the second place on machine number three, making two passes in that corner. So your leader as they come over that big jump is Mike Runyard. Here comes second up. Here's DeStefano challenging on Mike Runyard, bike number 36, trying to get to the inside. There's Ellis on machine number seven. It's tight traffic through that twisting infield turn. Up and over the hoop de doo And here's DeStefano, out of shape, somersaulting over the handlebars. The second place rider has crashed. 
DiStefano tries to regain his feet, but his hopes in the Super Bowl bite the dust here. What a bad break for this 19-year-old Pennsylvania campaigner. That's going to put those two Can-Am stars first and second as the crowd cheers them on at the black and white of the Canadian manufacturer running in first and second spot. Mike Runyard, the leader, and Jimmy Ellis is your second-place campaigner right now. Remember, Ellis has to win this third and final moto to win the lion's share of $30,000. Delkey has only to finish second in this third and final moto to win the Super Bowl of motocross. Here comes Ellis making his charge to the outside around Runyard. They come down to that big leap at the start-finish line, and Ellis vaults into the lead. This entire is number seven, Jimmy Ellis on as he leads in the Super Bowl of motocross. This young 19-year-old who exploded out of the New England scene two years ago is one of the emerging superstars. His pit crew, dad, mom, his young bride, and the family's pet skunk. He's three for three in stadium races this year, and we ask him if that gives him a psychological advantage. I probably have a little advantage over everybody else because I did win those other three races, and I'm hoping to do real good in this race. We have a lot of competition out here today. With tremendous confidence, jumping about 25 rows, the Los Angeles Coliseum, Jimmy Ellis reigns supreme here in round number three with an eight-second advantage over second place. Oh, he's in trouble, Ken. He's off the racetrack. Ellis hit that whoop de doo and got out of control, and here comes the field bearing down on him as he struggles to get back underway. That margin is trimmed down to just a couple of seconds as Mike Runyard is right there in second spot, and Zdenek Belke has now charged up into fourth. It's an all-new ball game for Jimmy Ellis, the race leader at this point as Belke is knocking at the door back there. There's Belke, number 77, and he's challenging for third with Rich Thorwaldson. Here comes your leader, Jimmy Ellis, but there's lots and lots of action right behind him as Belke tries to close in on third spot. Here's Belke, number 77. He goes to the inside on Thorwaldson. Belke is there. Belke's got third place right behind Mike Runyard, the teammate of the leader, Jimmy Ellis, as they go up and over the jump. Ellis is first, Runyard is in second place, they are teammates, what about it Davis Bain, will Runyard block for the leader Ellis? You can bet that Jimmy Ellis is hoping so, Runyard is going to have to do something to keep Belkey behind him and out of second spot. The leader Ellis, two second advantage over his teammate Mike Runyard, who crashes! Runyard is slammed into the wall of the peristyle. Belke has moved into second position of the Super Bowl of motocross. Here comes another challenger right behind him, too. It's number two, Jim Weiner. Weiner knifes to the inside and takes over third. And now he has only Zdenek Belke ahead of him as he's trying to challenge for second. Belke can win it all right here. All he has to do is stay up behind this number seven. That's Belke, number 77. All he has to do is stay on two wheels, and he will win the Super Bowl of motocross with a second-place finish in the third moto. So Jimmy Ellis is no longer the master of his own fate. He is the leader in the race, but that's not going to guarantee him the victory. Here comes your leader, Ellis. Belke is in second place, and now Weinert becomes the ally of Jimmy Ellis. He's got to get around Belke and take over second spot to ensure the victory for the Can-Am rider. Belke won the first moto. Ellis won the second. This is the showdown. And they come around here as Zdenek Belke, number 77. He's feeling that pressure from Jim Weiner. Weiner is definitely closing on machine number two. Around through the whoop de doo jumps they come with Jim Weiner trying valiantly to reel in the charging Czechoslovakian Zdenek Belke. There's the leader, Ellis, still in front, and Belke is nibbling away at his lead as they go up into the peristyle. It looks like that battle for second place is drawing them closer and closer to the leader. There's your second place battle going up and out of sight right now. 50,000 people waiting for this leap, and here it is, really heaving that bike forward. Jimmy Ellis trying to get an advantage over the second-place rider, and rider is down in the peristyle. That's fourth-place Pierre Karsbakers, who is sidelined. The riders go streaking by as he tries to get back into it. 50,000 is seen here in the Los Angeles Coliseum. As we move to the final moments, we have three riders within one three. Here it is again. Here's Belke down on the inside. You see the front wheel get out of shape. He falls off and almost appears to be trying to tackle Weiner as he senses victory escaping his grasp. Zdenek Belke has crashed. Jimmy Ellis leads. Weiner is second. And Thorwaltz runs in third spot. An interesting development here. Weiner can get by Ellis. They end up tied on total points for the event, and Weiner wins the Super Bowl of motocross on the basis of the best finish in this final moto. There's the separation from first to second. Belke is up after his crash and is running fifth. Back to the peristyle go the leaders. Ellis, number seven in command. 
He just seems to get more and more confidence as this event continues. He's got perfect lines. Oh, Velke is down. Velke has crashed again. Probably the effects of that first impact. He's shaken by it. He's out of the picture now, Ken. There's no doubt about that. It's amazing the beating these athletes take in this sport. Well, it's the second most physically demanding sport in the world, Ken, behind professional soccer. American professional football, interestingly enough, ranks in eighth position in that medical survey. Jimmy Ellis of Cobalt, Connecticut, seems to be on his way to victory, but every time we've had a man in front, he usually has gone down throughout these previous two motos and including this event some of the leaders have had real problems and this guy right here jim weinert has the ability to do it all he's a 500 cc national champion he could reel in ellis on this course and take that victory away from him in the waning moments Here at the Super Bowl of Motocross, this must have been the key moment. Belki of Czechoslovakia with a terrible come off that has cost him a chance to win the Super Bowl and gives the win, perhaps, to this young man here, Jimmy Ellis of Cobalt, Connecticut. Appropriated first position in the second moto of the day, stays in front of Jim Weiner by about two seconds with less than two laps remaining in competition. Here's Karsmaker running in third, Dave Despain. But for him, it's a matter of catching up and no place to go to win it all. The guy who's going to win it all, if he can keep it upright and hold off Jim Weinert, is right here. Jim Ellis, number seven. 18 months ago, he was in traction with a badly broken pelvis. Tonight, he's on his way to victory in what could be the biggest motorcycle race in the world. Jimmy Ellis of Cobalt, Connecticut. And he'll be looking for the white flag. There's the interval. Back to number two, Jim Weinert. Jam and Jimmy, they call him, from Laguna Beach, California, on the Yamaha. So it's an East Coast rider in first and a Westerner running second, and the Europeans left far behind as the competition moves toward conclusion in the biggest motocross event in history. There's the Denik Velke, and it's ironic because he was so close to winning it all, he's about to be lapped right now by Jimmy Ellis after those two big crashes. This crowd really begins to sense it, Can They know that America is going to take home the fourth Super Bowl of motocross. Two years ago, we saw this young man riding for $50 to win up on a New England track. Here he is riding for a $5,000 first prize. Jimmy Ellis moves through turn 13. He'll be picking up the white flag with one lap. If he can keep it all gathered up and dialed in for one more trip through 13 turns, he will have won the Super Bowl. Here's the guy with one last chance to pull it all out. That's jamming Jimmy Weinert. The white flag flies, indicating one lap to go. Ellis Weinert, this entire field, beaten by the brutal effects of 60 minutes racing time on this meat grinder of a race course. They'll have to have their hands pried off the handlebars when it's all over. That crowd is just going ecstatic here as they realize that a United States campaigner, either Weinert in second or Ellis in first, is going to take all the marbles in Super Bowl number four of motocross. In fact, some of that crowd in this very last lap of competition is already beginning to break across the track down here, Dave. A very dangerous situation. The fans come streaming down and across the racetrack. We've still got bikes out there at racing speed, and it's dangerous indeed. It's another obstacle on this course filled with obstacles. They're all trying to get at the winners, and the leader right now is this young man, Jimmy Ellis. Ascending to Peristyle for the final time. Ellis going for victory. All he has to do is stay up for about one-third of the course now, and it's all his. He's put Jim Weinert well back behind him, and Jimmy Ellis appears headed for the biggest motorcycling victory of his life in the Super Bowl. Listen to this thunderous crowd as Ellis moves toward victory. He works his way past some of the lap riders. You'd think the Los Angeles Rams, Dave, are on their way to a Super Bowl victory the way this crowd is responding to this young American's efforts in the Super Bowl of motocross. Jimmy Ellis.